Hello. Hello, everyone. Melbourne Musos, where the hell am I here? Hey, Melbourne Musos, Facebook Live on Friday. What a week. What a week. Ah. Got a few beautiful questions from a few beautiful people. different there we go I'll get that going and where am I heading here I'm gonna turn that down and yes my name is Chris Gwendolyn welcome to Melbourne Musos Facebook live on what has been a catastrophic week for the world and uh, I am going to try and smile my way through it but it's going to be a bit tricky um, all we can do is do what we do and fight through it and fight and that's what it is and I'm going to get a few things out of the way, uh, and then I'm going to talk about a few, uh, a few uh, things that I'm going to do a bit of a tribute and an honour to, sort of thing. But I'm going to go fairly straight to begin with. Let's smile. Let's have a beer later on. Okay, so there we go. Now... Uh, Stephen Tocci, you've asked me about Billy Joel, the Liberty DeVito, one of the undersung drummers he really is. Um, many, many years with Billy Joel. Only the good die young and all that sort of stuff. Mate, it's a shuffle, but it's not the shuffle that you sort of think that it is, um, um, or one would think that it is. You've got a normal shuffle, right? One to two to three to four to one to two to three to four to one to two to three to four to one to two to three to four, like that. But what Liberty DeVito does with that particular song is he doesn't play one. He puts the bass drum on two and four with the snare drum. So it's like one to two to three to four to one to two to three to four to one to two to three to four to one to two to three to four. Oh, pardon me, I put it on one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Only the good die young. And all that sort of biz, you see. And that's what happens there. One of the other things when he does the stop times, bam, bam, and all that stuff, it's doing it, bam. It's on the accents um, when he comes back into the beat. It comes in on two, not one, okay? So you get that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. One, there you go, you see. It's as simple as that, really. And um, it's, I should say it's as simple as that, but it, sometimes trying to put your bass drum on an offbeat is always a little bit tricky. As we know, Stephen Tocci, because you last, you last year asked me about Fela Kuti. And what happens with that is that's on, the bass drum is on the offbeat as well. So... What I'm doing there is more like on the ends. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, one, and two, and three, four, and one. So there's a lot of things, you know. And um, also, if you take it, you know, another kind of way. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two. Which is sort of like a, a compound time reggae, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, like that. I love Vinnie Colliuta with uh, Zappa, Joe's Garage, uh, Stuart Copeland, all that sort of stuff. Giant steps, oh, what you take, walking on the moon. That's on two and four as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you take the timeline, only the good lot uh, die young. His mid-80s and stuff, and throughout the 80s, reggae was huge, so was police and all that. So there was a lot of that going around, Stephen. So there you go. There's all that sort of biz. I hope that goes okay for you there. It's a little bit 
of that. So I'll go over it again. It's just a standard shuffle. Here's a, here is a standard shuffle. One to two, to three to four, to one to two, to three to four. Take away the bass drum on one and three. Two and four. One to two, three to four. There you go. You see, there it is. All right, I'll move on. Andrew Marshall. I think you've actually asked me this question before, but give us a rundown of drum skins. All right, here we go. Uh, drum skins. Um, uh, what happens is uh, with drum skins, like the lolly aisle <laughs> of the sh shopping centre. Um, you can have thin ones and thick ones and in-between ones and calf, calf tone ones without, without hurting any baby calves, you know, that kind of thing. Evans have a calf tone to give you that retro style. And as you know, up, up until a year ago, I had calf tones on my drum kit oh, for a while there. And I, and I still have um, the same kind of deal over there on my old rosewood kit and all that. But essentially, let me take you through a through a couple of things. Essentially, uh, you can have clear skins. These are coated skins. These particular ones are Evans UV1s. They now have a UV2 out. And these are single ply. Doris just loves them. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, there you go. There's UV1, single plies. I've always been an Evans G1 guy for about 30 years. And so um, these are beautiful skins, don't get me wrong. I've had them on for a year now. That's how tough they are. They're a little bit thicker uh, for a one ply and all that. But they are coated, you see. Now, just very quickly, and um, where, am I? where are my Duvalakis? There it is. Um, you need coated skins um, for brushes, okay? Because they have some, they have something to take a rough, you know, sort of thing. And um, so brushes um, don't really work that well on clear skins. Actually, they're quite shit. Anyway, did I say naughty word? There you go. So if you're going to play brushes, which I urge everyone to do, uh, get coated skins on everything. And there you go. Uh, then if I'm going to talk um, different kinds of things, um, on my other drum kit, the white one that I gig with, Andrew, that's the one I think you've seen probably the most live and in person. Deidre, she's in the other room. Um, I have G2s on that one. And that's fumpa. That's beautiful. I like it very much indeed. <laughs> oh, sounds easy, doesn't it? But um, yeah, so with Doris here, because I do so many different kinds of styles from one week to the other, I mean, God help me, I've, I've just done Liberty DeVito for you, Stephen Tocci, you see, and all that. Now, Andrew, I'm talking about this. What I find is that one ply skins are actually quite versatile. I need versatility. One of the things about skins. If you've got a live skin, like this one with a bit of ping. Ooh, the ping of destiny. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, you've just been pinged. Yeah. That's all well and good. That's fine. You've got a live drum. So if the producer of the session comes out and sort of says, Chris, that's, that's the ping of destiny. We don't really want this, you know. <laughs> You can just whip your wallet out, sort of thing. My thin, thin, thin wallet at the moment. But anyway, there you go. And you can whack it on and you can dampen a live drum down. If you've already got a bit of a dead or dry, let's say. I won't say dead. I'll take that back. Um, if you've got a dry drum skin, uh, like a genera dry, which are fantastic for that purpose, but then someone wants a little bit of pop and bubble and all that, you can't, you can't do it because you can't make a dry skin 
pingy, if you know what I'm getting at, you know, that kind of thing, especially if you've got a, a, a ring underneath or anything like that. It, they're fantastic. I've, I've used a Genera dry in the past for, for marching and I've actually put it on my uh, parade drum. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But when you want versatility, what you need to do really, my, my bit of a thing is one-ply skins here and then I can dampen it down when I need to, either with an E-ring or a bit of moon gel. I don't have moon gel here. Or your wallet or whatever it might be. You see, that's what you can do, you see. And that's what goes on. But with my other drum kit, I have the G2s because that's sort of purpose-built, you see. And um, that's sort of rock and away we go, you see. So, you know, there's that. There's usually, you know, I, I mean, it's like anything. You can get a light skin, a medium skin, and a heavy skin, you know. Um, if I go to uh, Remo, for instance, I use Evans. I've been using Evans for decades now. They're whatever. But I'm going to talk about Re Remo. What you have is three types. You've got the thin one is the diplomat. You've got the uh, medium one. The standard one is the ambassador. And then the thicker one is the emperor, you see. And that's what goes on, three sizes. And then with that, you've got, once again, I'll just repeat myself, you've got the, uh, you've got the clear skin which is terrific for some things, uh, and, um, and then you've got the coated skins. I've been using coated skins for quite a while, and because it, they are coated, they give you a different kind of a tone, you see. With the piccolos over here, when I first got them, they had the uh, DW uh, specific skins with the little white ring around them, and they were, they were wonderful. You know, they kind of, you know, and I had them for years. I mean, I got these in 2002, right? That was a long time ago. Oh, boy. Hey, they're 18 years old. They can vote. <laughs> anyway, and there you go. So that's what goes on there. And, um, but when I changed them up, I, I want consistency now. So the, the, everything's a UV1, right? Got the picture? Get it? Got it. Good. Okay, so there you go. So, Andrew, I hope that helped. Uh, many, many different kinds of skins. Um, if you go to any of the uh, websites, like the Evans website, you can just press the button and you can hear it. But doing and all that sort of stuff. And, and hear it for what you need, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, horses for courses, you know, that kind of thing. And um, you, want, you do want versatility. You know, and, and that kind of thing. So um, that's what I do for here. And then, as I said, I use double ply skins because poor old Deidre in the other room um, has been flogged by other drummers because, you know, when I'm doing the, you know, if I'm, in my, if I'm in the headline band, which I was for quite a bit there for a while, or whatever it is, all the, all the other blokes, oh, mate, can I use your drum kit? Yeah. Whack, 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 whack. And there you go. So, oh, thanks, mate. Anyway, but we're all in it together. That's what, that was my little grizzle, but it's all right. It's okay. I take, don't tell me to get nicked. It's okay. Because I've used other people's kits too. So, you know, it goes works two ways. But that's the thing. It needed durability is what I'm really getting at. Okay. So there it is. Now for the meat and potatoes of tonight's uh, Face Chook Live. Um, what a week we've all had. And it's not getting any better because um, what has happened this week is a drummer that has circled around um, my collection for years and years and years has sadly passed away this week again. We've got it's a bad bloody year for drummers, I've got to tell you. And um, this week, um, William Frederick Rifflin um, has left the building to the great drumming gig in the sky. And uh, William Rifflin is best known uh, for coming up. Um, he was being he was the drummer for Ministry, okay. So um, all those great beats, uh, the early industrial metal, you know, which beget Rammstein. Oh, sorry, I just said that wrong. Rammstein. You've got to roll your R. Ah, Rammstein. But he didn't play that. Ministry and all that. 
and um, he's he's left the building. Um, he's done so much stuff. He's a multi instrumentalist. He's very close in age to me, and um, the big C got him, and um, it's very sad. He was born on the September the 29th, 1960, and he passed away uh, three days ago um, in uh, this year. He was an American musician, came to prominence in the 1990s, mainly for his work as a drummer with groups, uh, ministry, the revolting... <laughs> Lard, KMFDM, Pig Face Swans, Chris Connolly, and Nine Inch Nails is on the Fragile album, but he didn't he wasn't the drummer all the way through, but that is a masterpiece. Go off and listen to the Fragile. Oh man, oh man, that album. Unbelievable. Anyway, um he started in Seattle, okay, and there you go. And um he's been in a lot of different bands, but the one thing that I haven't sort of said yet but here, um, and this is why it's so close to my heart, is because the last seven years he was one of the drummers of King Crimson, who I love and adore. And, um, yeah, so that's what goes on there. So, um, mostly all live, and he's one of three drummers, um, along with uh, Pat Mastoletto and Gavin Harrison from Porcupine Tree and all that. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff here um, uh, about um, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill Rifflin, and all that, and um, essentially uh, he, I'll, I'll, I'll just go. I'll, I won't. I can't read the lot. It's all just Wikipedia. So check it out. I'm just pointing you to it, and there you go. But as I said, um, check out Ministry. He's all over those albums, and I mean those those kinds of beats. I mean they're great. I mean you just got solid. It's just so solid. Like yeah. Jesus built my hot rod. <laughs> Get a bit in there, will you? Okay, there you go, that kind of stuff. Do you remember that film clip? He's on that one. Uh, Jesus built my hot rod. And there's the bit where they've got all the drummers and, oh, sorry, the uh, all the guitarists all in a row. And the dude's swinging his microphone around and one of the, <laughs> one of the guitarists ducked. But his, his guitar was sticking up. And uh, <laughs> Do you remember that? What a clip. I think that was Jesus Built My Hot Rod. And that's Bill Rifflin up the back playing the drums, you know, that kind of thing. I've got a couple of ministry albums out the back there. As a pisser, I mean, you, he's, he's gone up like that. His guitar, his guitar neck's gone up like that. And the microphone... <laughs> oh. It's a work of art. Jesus built my hot rod. There you go. It was great. It was fun and all that. But ministry were huge in the early 90s. They started almost like a whole genre. There you go. There you go. So that's all that. And um, and then he started up a thing called the, um, the Filth Pig Sessions and Pig Face. And that's where he came into contact, I believe, with uh, Fripp. Robert Fripp of King Crimson and Trey Gunn of uh, uh, King Crimson as well and all that. So there's all that business there. And um, what I did in the research for what I, for today's face chook is that I, you know, I just went to um, the, uh, uh, you know, I went to the YouTube's and checked out various things. And um, essentially, it wasn't so much new music from King Crimson, but a lot of live material and all that. And to a point, a double quartet, you know, and that's what Fripp does and all that. And um, what happens is um, with that, um, one of the things that they did was Starless, okay, and I am an unashamed King Crimson tragic along with Zapper and Tull and all that. And... Um, Essentially, the last couple of nights, um, I've just been doing a little bit of the old spoken word. And um, I'm a bit of a rap for good old Dylan Thomas, okay? And this is where the King Crimson album, Starless and Bible Black, comes from. Uh, from his radio play for voices called Under Milkwood. Write it down, go to YouTube and um, listen to the late Sir Richard Burton 
uh, do the opening introduction to that radio play. You will see, the BBC presents Under Milk Woods by Dylan Thomas. And then this voice just comes in. Dark, starless, and Bible black. Oh, <laughs> what a voice. Welsh. Oof. There you go. And I do love that track, if you know that. And Bill Rifflin was all over the one that I listened to today. The three of them, they were taking solos and going in between and up. And it's just this song, Starless, off of the Red Album, sort of thing. Uh, in the Day with Bill Bruford and John Wetton. Uh, R.I.P. for John Wetton as well and all that. Um, but, oh, man, what they did with that tune. It just took you on a journey. I've got the vinyl at side two, okay? And um, there's one part that I'd like to talk about in it, and it starts small and works up to a frenzy. And um, it's the section that um, is in 13, okay? Now, last week I was saying hello to Spike and Sarade about the T-shirt. These are difficult times. They sure bloody well are. And 13.8 is in Starless, and what it is, I'll talk about this quickly. You've got, it feels like a compound time. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you've got a four, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then another three, 11, 12, 13, all right? Did I do 13? It's a syllable, 13, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, one, two, three, four. Now let me take you through it. What happens is you start out with a standard six, eight, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Then you've got a four, which is seven, eight, nine, ten, and you get one, two, three, and four. Okay, so. Bah, bah. Now, okay, we all know about triplets, okay? A triplet is a group of three notes played in the time of two of the same kind, all right? But what happens if you're playing in compound time when three notes are normal, three quavers? What you have is a duplet. <laughs> a duplet is a group of two notes played in the time of three, okay? So there you go, it's just backwards, you see. So what you have is one, two... And you know what that is? The Hemiola from Espanola. Ah. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So that's what it is. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One. it is that's starless is it 624 already bloody hell have i been waffling on that much anyway there you go now um there's that um that's bill reflin now um something else happened this week that's a bit on a personal thing um uh, how do i put it one of the old folkies in my uh, dad's old pub the dan o'connell passed away uh through the week and his name was Tony Lavin of the Colonials and um, any other band that came out of Dad's pub in the late 60s and all that. And um, I want to say a hello to David Brannigan, Dad's old mate, who helped start all the Irish music at the Dan O'Connor with Dad back in 1969, along with the beautiful R.I.P. Jamie Johnson and all that. And that is where I grew up. And um, Tony Lavin, um, I got to know much better um, than um, the other great musos. Um, if I bring up Declan Affley, um, uh, he took a real shine to my family and all that. He would always be patting my head and all that sort of stuff. He was fantastic. And I, I, I saw Declan one time um, hold 
Dallas Brooks Hall spellbound with a song. It was amazing stuff. And Tony Lavin had the most beautiful Irish brogue voice. And I got to know him a bit better because um, in the 1980s, um, my last job before I went full-time music, I worked with him uh, for a while there at Max Kerwin Mazda. I used to do smash quotes. If it rained on Sunday, I was probably doing a quote on your car on Monday if it was an old Mazda 626. I still remember some of the numbers. GC 10E1. Uh, fuel fil oh, no, sorry, oil filter, 8173501B. Ha! There you go. <laughs> anyway, and Tony Lavin has left the building. And um, David Brannigan rang me up um, last night. And, um, and we just talked about some of the old tapes from the Dan back in the day, you know, early 70s, all on reel to reel. And we've got a... We have a project um, to try and get them out before the tapes literally disintegrate. And Tony Lavin is all over that. And so what I'm doing now is for him and Bill Rifflin. They've both left the building this week. I do believe I heard that, um, dare I say it, um, Tony basically went to sleep after yelling at the Prime Minister at the TV. That, that was him to a T, all right? And he's um, up there somewhere and he's probably going to be fighting my brother for a beer because, <laughs> oh, shit, oh, knocking of heads back in the day, you know, sort of thing. Um, we haven't long gone past St. Paddy's Day and that was the day, even David Brannigan and I were talking about having a laugh about it last night um, in the sense that the intercom would go off. Brr, brr, up in the thing. And I'd be upstairs watching my cartoons. I've sort of said this already to a certain degree. Get down here, son. Help your brother wash some glasses. Click. And down I went. Washing glasses and all that sort of stuff. And there'd be Tony Lavin out the back singing up a storm. Drinking every, every Guinness under the sun. Getting poured out. back. <laughs> oh, the days. And that's Tony Lavin. He was a funny bugger. And all that. Along with Bill Reflin. So what I've done here um, is uh, some of you might know that um, I do like my words. You know, I can't sing for shit, but um, um, I, like, I like the spoken word. And one of the things that happens is that um, uh, what I do here on the drums, especially with my triggers and things, if I bring it back up and all that, um, I want to talk about, I want to multitask, I'm, you know, I like multitasking. Oh, that's a bit loud, Chris, come on now, come on, come on, there you go. Now, I'm talking Bill Rifflin, which takes me into things like... Uh <laughs> King Crimson, of course, which I've just finished talking about with Starless. And one of the things about King Crimson is their ability to be one of the heaviest bands when they want to be, but their improvising skills and the space that they can create. My patches here go to Frippatronics, what Robert Fripp was able to do with, say, people like Brian Eno, of which I have his apps on my phone. He's got beautiful ambient apps. Ah. And some of the drummers that had over the years. Probably the most famous is Bill Bruford, of course, after he left the S in 1973. Arguably, three of the most important prog rock albums as a trio is King Crimson's Lark's Tongue in Aspic. 
red, red, and starless in Bible black. Ah, ah. Now I'm going to read this to you. This is the lyrics to Starless. I'm not going to sing them. I'll scare you all off if I haven't already. Sundown. Dazzling day. Gold through my eye. But my eyes turned within. Only see. Bible black. Ice blue silver sky fades into gray to a gray hope that oh years. Starless and Bible black. Old friend, charity, cruel twisted smile. And the smile signals emptiness. Starless the Bible Black Song um, on the Lark's Tongue in Aspic album called The Talking Drum. Disappointment. Disappoint. Not the album, is it? Now, my friends, is Melbourne Muso's Facebook Live for today, after one of the 
toughest weeks in world history. And I want to wish everyone the best. And um, we're all in it together, hey? Let's go. Um, yeah. If you got them, drink them. <laughs> and there you go. Anyway, take care. My name's Chris Quinlan, Melbourne Musos. It'll be up uh, with the four camera shoot um, a little bit later on tonight. Okay? Woo! There you go. Okay, I'm out of here. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, gigantic um, Bill Rifflin and Tony Levin. Take care.